And welcome back to Cool Dude Clem's Very Messy Bench. Oh, forgot the synchronization clap. Like I always do. Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. So I thought it was about time I got back to work on the homemade switch mode power supply. Now you may remember this circuit from the previous video. And all this is right now is pretty much just a glorified square wave generator with variable pulse width and variable frequency. But eventually, when I've got the gate drive transformer connected, and when I've got the MOSFETs connected and the output transformer, I'm going to work on the feedback networks to regulate the voltage and the current limit and all that good stuff. But before I do any of that stuff, I want to make sure that I'm getting a good signal at my MOSFET gates. Also, I found a couple of old MOSFETs out of some junked electronics and I want to test that they're good. So that's what I'm going to do right now. Now at the moment these are just a couple of IRFC 44Ns. The actual thing is going to use much higher voltage MOSFETs but for the purposes of this test, these will do. So what we've got here is a um, simple test circuit to test the MOSFETs. So, I guess I better show a schematic of this, so uh, let's go over to that. Okay, well, this is the little old circuit, and what we got here is, um, wait. So this is the circuit, as you can see, two light bulbs here, two MOSFETs here, and open connections to the gates, positive and ground. These two 12 volts are the same, so yeah, we can just think of them as connected together. So, if I touch the 12 volts and the gate of this MOSFET, this light will come on. If I touch the 12 volts and the gate of this MOSFET, this bulb should come on. If I touch the ground and the gate of this MOSFET, this light should go out. And if I touch the ground and the gate of this MOSFET, this light should go out. And here we are back at the breadboard. Now if you look closely you can see a couple of exposed wires. This one goes to the negative of the power supply, which is also ground. And this one goes to the positive. So uh, let's see if this works. So I'm going to touch the positive with one hand. And I'm going to charge the gates of the MOSFETs with my other hand. If the lights come on, I know these MOSFETs are working. Okay. That one's working. Uh, is this one working? Okay, those lights are swamping out the camera, but... Shows these MOSFETs are working. Now if I touch the ground, and then touch the MOSFET gates... And turn the lights off. So, yeah, these two MOSFETs are good. Maybe you can hear the cat in the background. Food! 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 I haven't eaten in three minutes! I'm gonna wither and die! So anyway, what I want to try here is the MOSFETs connected directly to the gate driver chips through a 22 ohm resistor and a diode. These diodes will make sure that the gates discharge nice and quickly. And I've also decided to use a couple of light bulbs as the load. So when I turn this on, the bulbs should come on a little bit, and as I adjust the duty cycle, they should get brighter and dimmer, if this thing is working. Let's see. Okay, well, the bulbs have come on. Let's adjust our duty cycle here. Uh-huh. So it go really low. And go really high. Of course, they're not going to be as bright as they were before, because now they're only getting about 50% duty cycle at the most. Anyway, yeah. Let's turn that off, and let's look at some waveforms. Okay, so, going to measure the gate of this MOSFET. There's no reason, no need to measure both of them, because both of them are going to give us the same thing. So, let's just turn our power on, and see what we get. Okay. So now you can see the duty cycle shrink and grow. 
got a little bit of a bleh there, but I just think that's an artifact of the wiring and because I'm doing this on a breadboard. Other than that though, let's just turn it up all the way. Other than that though, I've got a pretty decent square wave. Frequency is a lot lower than what I want it to be though. We're only at 23 kilohertz, so turn the frequency up to about 50 kilohertz. Right. So that's about the frequency that I want to operate this circuit at. Let's give ourselves a bit more resolution there. Yeah. I don't think that looks bad. Let's just test the MOSFETs. Stone cold. Alright then, I think it's about time to try a gate drive transformer. Okay, so, I've gone and made a gate drive transformer. Now, I've got the core out of one of those um, mains filter chokes. They seem to make pretty good transformer cores, so that's what I've done. You can see there's four wires, well, eight wires coming out, but there's four wires, you know, four windings. That's what I'm trying to say. So each winding is about 12 turns each, so I am going to plug this in and see what kind of output we get. Okay, so this is what I want to try now. So, as you can see, we've got a gate drive transformer now, and you can see how the MOSFETs are connected. One thing I haven't mentioned, which I really think I should mention, is remember how I said there's four windings on that gate drive transformer? Well, Two of those windings are in parallel, like that. Just works a little better that way. So anyway, as you can see here, I've got two light bulbs in the circuit. One light bulb is connected between this, the upper MOSFET's source and the ground. And this light bulb is connected between the lower MOSFET's drain and the plus 12 volts. Now what I want to see is both of these light bulbs coming on at the same brightness. I'm a little bit skeptical as to whether this circuit's going to work. I don't think it's going to work all that well, but let's give it a try and see what we get. Okay, well, this hasn't gone so well. If I turn the power on, you can clearly see one bulb is brighter than the other one, and if we look at the waveform we're getting, yeah, this is at the lower MOSFET. And we'll just see what the upper MOSFET's doing. Yeah. You can see we've got a very imbalanced wave there. And I'm pretty sure that upper MOSFET might be getting pretty toasty. That one's cold. Yeah, that one's a little bit warm, but... Yeah, back to the drawing board, I think. Well, I'm going to change my name to Freddy Fudge Up, I think. I was poring over this trying to figure out why things were so out of whack. I wired the transformer up wrong. Just a moment ago my camera was too dark and now it's too bright. Still getting an imbalanced waveform though. If I turn the thing on we can still see one bulb is brighter than the other. So I'm going to try another way of connecting the transistors. But before we do that, let's just take a look at the waveforms at the MOSFET gates. After all, we haven't seen what the waveforms look like with the MOSFETs unloaded. So, yeah, that's what I'm doing here. I forgot to say that. So, let's take a look at our upper MOSFET here. See what that's doing, I just bashed the camera. Got a pretty clean positive, but... Yeah, I don't like this negative going into the MOSFET gates. I'm sure that's going to be the same for the lower MOSFET. Let's just put that back in, or we will get an imbalanced signal. Right. So, lower MOSFET, if I can just get that in there, without shorting anything out with my clip leads. Lower MOSFET gate. Yeah, it's pretty much the same story. Okay, well, I was just not happy with that waveform. So, I decided 
To go back to the original way I was going to connect the MOSFETs in the first place, which is what you can see here. And, well, let's have a look at what kind of waveform we get from this. So, let's take a look at the waveforms that we have at the MOSFET gates. The circuit is on right now, so I'm just going to probe the upper MOSFET gates, see what we got. Oh, that looked good. Get that on there properly. Wow, look at that. That is a good gate driving waveform. Let's see what we got at the lower MOSFET. Hopefully we have the same thing. Just much easier to probe there. Than at the actual MOSFET gate. Yep. It's very hard to actually reach in there and get to the MOSFET gate. I can just get my probe there, we can actually see it. Yeah, we got a good waveform. Yeah. Okay, now I want to try this. As you can see, we've got two light bulbs in the circuit. And this is basically the same circuit as this, except drawn a little bit differently. And of course, instead of a diode and a resistor at the MOSFET gates, we have all of this stuff. Now, what I forgot to mention with the previous circuits, this one is that both of these 12 volts are the same supply, and that goes the same for this circuit as well. And as you can see, like the other circuits, we have one light bulb connected to the upper MOSFET source, and one light, one light bulb connected to the lower MOSFET's drain. And hopefully, both of these light bulbs should come on at the same brightness. And when I scope the voltage across each light bulb, what we should see is a 12 volt pulse, then nothing, then another 12 volt pulse, then nothing, then another 12 volt pulse, then nothing. And the same should apply to the bottom light bulb as well. So, let's power this up and see if it works. Let's turn this on and see if it works. Let's switch it on and see if it works. Okay then, we're all set. So, this bulb is connected to the high side MOSFET, and this one is connected to the low side, low side MOSFET. So, let's turn it on and see what happens. Oh wow, look at that, they're both the same brightness. Let's adjust the duty cycle, so that's on its lowest, and that's on its highest. Alright, look at this. Let's measure a few waveforms. So, I'm going to try and probe across the low side bulb. Might be a bit difficult to get that on there. Come on, give us a waveform. There we go. Yeah, it's kind of hard to get that to stay on there. I don't really want to touch the bulbs and burn myself, that's the thing. Yeah, but you can... When it was connecting, you could see the... I mean, we did have a good connection between the scope and the bulb, you could see the waveform from there. Now we should be seeing the same at the high side bulb. Come on, get on there. There we go. Yeah, so, there was a little bit of artifacts there, but you know, you can expect that with the way this circuit's made. Right then, well, um, Let's see what we've got at the gates. Let's just put that little prob in there. Let's see if we can get that round to the gate of the low side MOSFET. Oh, we were right there. Alright, so that's what's happening at the low side MOSFET gate. Let's see if we can do the high side. There we are, there's our high side MOSFET gate. It's looking good. Now let's see what's coming out of the transformer. So, low side winding. Okay, that looks good. And the high side winding, hopefully without shorting anything out. Yeah, good. 
Well, my homemade microphone makes its appearance in the camera. Because I've got this thing strapped to my head. Well, that looks good. Okay, so this is the final design for the output stage of my switch mode power supply project. So, eventually what we're going to have is we're going to have a coil here, a couple of capacitors, we're going to have one there and one there, you know, half bridge. I just haven't drawn them in yet. But yeah, I think this way of um, charging and discharging the MOSFET gate is a really good idea because let's say this coil here or this winding here, whatever you want to call it, let's say this side is positive and this side is negative. The MOSFET gate is going to get charged through this resistor and this diode. And at this point, this PNP transistor and this resistor might just as well not be there. But when the output of this coil is neutral or we have negative here and positive here, this transistor will turn on and it will discharge that MOSFET gate pretty much instantly. So there's very little chance of shoot through, you know, both of these transistors being on at the same time. Because if they were both on at the same time, yep, something would definitely blow up. Also something would definitely blow up if this coil wasn't flipped, because then they would be both on at the same time. Anyway, I'm going to do a little bit of an experiment with this. I'm going to connect a light bulb, one end of the light bulb here and the other end of the light bulb there. And then I'm going to put a capacitor between the light bulb and the output. Also, I've got the scope connected up across the light bulb. So, let's turn this on. Okay, that's looking good. Get nice 12 volt peaks across the light bulb there. Let's adjust the duty cycle. Yep, that's looking good. Now I've got a couple of capacitors here. A couple of one microfarad capacitors together, so we've got about two microfarads of uh, whatever capacitance. So I'm not going to connect that capacitor across and let's see what we get across the light bulb. Just give me a few seconds. Get this in there. There's a microphone. Keeps making its appearance. Well, we seem to have lost a little bit of voltage, but... It's working. Brillissimo. Well, uh, yeah. Well, I think this video has been going on too long already. So, next time we're going to try this with a transformer connected to the MOSFETs and see if that works. But anyway, yeah, I think I've waffled on for enough. I've got like 30 million hours of footage to edit now, so yeah. I better get on with that, and until next time, goodbye.